Don't you just love a super smooth 3D print time lapse? I mean, where the part just looks like it grows right out of the build plate. I get to watch them all day. I never was really happy with the quality of the time lapses I was getting. I've tried Octoprint. I've tried using a capture card with my DSLR camera. I've tried webcams and I just never was really happy with the quality I was getting. So I decided I want to make a trigger so my printer could tell my Lumix DSLR camera when to take a picture and I could have full quality time lapse pictures. So let's design it. This is a circuit I found in several places online for a remote shutter for a Panasonic Lumix camera. Now this will only work on Panasonic cameras, so if you have another type of DSLR camera you want to use as a time-lapse camera, let me know in the comments and I'll see if I can help you out with a circuit. The Lumix uses a 2.5 millimeter TRRS jack, and that TRRS stands for Tip Ring Ring Sleeve. All we use is the last ring and sleeve of the jack. As you can see, this circuit has a focus button also, and we won't be using that in our time-lapse switch. So we can remove that, and that leaves us two resistors here in series, and we don't need that, so we can combine those into one. And I'm gonna use a 47K resistor here, because that's what I have laying around, and it'll work in this situation. Okay, so the idea is to make a cable with a plug at one end, and a switch at the other. We'll build the circuit we just discussed in line to the cable. We'll have the slicer add commands to the G-code so that every layer, the printer will move the part to a certain location and then activate the switch. I also want to add a plug in the middle of the cable. The plug will allow us to remove the camera cable from the printer when it's not in use. It will also allow us to swap it out for a different camera cable if the need arises. For the camera side of the cable, we're going to use about a six foot section of cable that will give us a little bit of flexibility of where we place our camera when we're recording our time lapse. We'll start by stripping the cables and exposing about five millimeters worth of the wire. Then we'll tend the exposed wire. This is nothing more than melting a little solder on each one of them. Now we'll take one 47K resistor and we'll fold it in half and trim the ends even. Now we'll solder that resistor to the red wire that we just tend. Now we'll add an alligator clip just to hold this together while we make the next connection. Now we'll take a 2.2K resistor and trim each end to make it shorter. Now we can solder one end of that resistor to the joint that we just made. Now we can solder the other end of our 47K resistor to the black wire. Now it's time to start working with our plug. As I said earlier, we're only going to use the last ring and sleeve. So that means the red and white wires are not needed. So we can just cut them off. We're going to have to shorten one of the wires to make it match our assembly. So let's just cut one of these short. And strip the end of it. And now we'll tend the ends of our wires. Now let's install some shrink tubing onto the wire before we solder it together. I'm embarrassed to say how many times I've gotten in a hurry, soldered my wires together, and then realized I had to pull them back apart to put shrink tubing on them. Now we can solder our long wire into place. Remove our alligator clip and slide our shrink tubing into place. Now let's slide a piece of shrink tubing on the other side and solder that connection. The 
There's something I find really satisfying about shrinking shrink tubing in place. Okay, now let's add the plug to the other end. Start by stripping the cable. Now we can slide on a piece of shrink tubing and tend the ends of the wire. This is the male JST connector. And it's a little bit long, so let's start by chopping it off and stripping the ends of the wires. And tinning both of them. Before we solder it to the end of our cable, let's slide a piece of shrink tubing on each wire. Now we can solder it in place. To make the switch cable, we're going to use about two foot of cable and we'll start by stripping the end. We'll also tend the ends of both wires and the terminals on the switch. This makes it real easy to solder the wires to the switch. One thing you want to do before you solder these wires on is make sure you know which terminals connect when the switch is pushed. You can do this by using a multimeter in continuity mode. For the other end of the wire, we're going to crimp on a female JST connector. So let's start by stripping the wires and we want to bear about two millimeters worth of wire on each. Then we can crimp a pin connector on each wire. And insert those into the connector. We're going to install our limit switch over here on this guard. So let's remove the top and bottom screw. Then we can take some measurements and design our bracket. First, let's remove the plug that's plugged into the bottom of it. This is actually the plug for the x-axis limit switch. So we're going to line directly up with that. Okay, there's the guard. Now let's take some measurements and design a mounting bracket for our switch.
Okay, first let's remove the x-axis limit switch. Our new bracket is going to mount to the face of the guard here. It's going to line up right with the edge. So let's mark the slots. And now drill some pilot holes for our screws. Okay, first off, let's reinstall the x-axis limit switch. All right, let's lay the parts on here to verify that we have them in the right orientation before we screw them together. So the switch cable will be facing this direction right here. Now that we know the proper orientation, let's mount the switch to the switch bracket. Now we can mount the switch bracket to the holes we drilled in the guard. Now we can reinstall our guard onto our printer. Now that we have the guard installed, let's plug the printer's x-axis limit switch back in. I want the switch cable to follow the printer's harness here. So we're going to need some clips. So let's design it. Okay, here's our clips hot off the printer. Let's secure our cable to the printer's wiring harness. That should hold it in place. Okay, let's test the switch. It looks like the x-axis limit switch is triggering before our switch, so we're going to have to adjust it. We'll just loosen the screws and slide it to the right just a hair. Still triggering just a little early, so let's adjust it a little bit more. Okay, that's better. Okay, let's test our whole setup with a camera. 
We're gonna plug the camera into the remote port on the side of our camera. I turn the camera on and I'm gonna switch mine to the custom mode. I'm gonna go into the settings and change my aspect and ratio to 16.9. Now we can plug the camera cable into the printer cable. Now let's give it a try. It works. Okay, to make this work, we have to tell our slicer to move the print head after every layer so we can take that picture so it can trigger our trigger. So I'm using Cura here. First off, let's just put a part in here. I'm gonna put a calibration cube in there. And if you don't have that, you can get that up here in the marketplace. And it's called calibration parts, I believe. Now that I have that in there, I'm going to go to post-processing, modify G-code. And that'll allow us to add a script in here. So there's all kinds of different scripts in here. We're gonna choose time-lapse, imagine that. This is a pre-written one and it has a few settings here to allow us to, after every layer, move the print head in the bed to a certain spot. We're going to leave all this the same. You can modify this. This is how long the print head will pause to allow the picture to be taken. If you get it too short, you'll see some wobbling around. Default 700. I'm going to leave it at that for now. I'll probably go back and test shorter values because this does add to your print time. So the other thing I want to do is park the print head. I want to move the bed to 190 and I want to park the print head. I'm going to make this negative 15 and this will move it past the bed to the left and it'll actually go over and trigger the end stop. And since we lined our trigger up with the end stop, it'll trigger our trigger at the same time. So anyway, negative 15. I leave this at 9,000. I don't think it actually goes that fast, but I just leave that there. Retraction distance, I put that at one millimeter. It just pulls the material out just a little bit. Helps with stringing. And I leave the Z hop at zero. So anyway, now we can just hit close. And you can see down here with this little one, it's saying that there is a script in there. So if I click it, it brings us back here. So now, if you get to a point where you don't want to do a time lapse, you don't want that park to happen every time, you just click on this, click on this little X here, and it'll remove it. I'm not going to do it now because we want to add it into this one. So now that we did that, we can hit slice. It's going to take 27 minutes to print this, and it will move the print head every layer like we want it to. So let's move this over to our printer and give our trigger a try. Okay, I had the files in the printer, and here we are printing. And once it finishes this layer here, we should see it move over and trigger our trigger. There we go, it worked. Now I'll just let this print finish, and then when it does, I'll move the files over to the computer and I'll show you how to process them. Okay, now the print has ran it captured all the images. Now what do we do with them? Great, we have a whole bunch of pictures, but now we want a video. So how do we turn that into a video? So first off, I've transferred them all to a folder on my computer. I am looking at them now here. You can see them all. And I did a little video at the end here too. So I'm going to um, move that out into another folder for now. We'll come back to that later. Okay, so now you can see up here at the top at the beginning we had some just random pictures. And these are as it's doing the startup and all that. So it actually triggers a few times. So first thing you want to do is just go ahead and get rid of these ones with nothing on the plate. So we'll go ahead and delete those. And now we have the first one here. And you can see it put the first layer down. The next picture has another layer and then so on and so on and so on and so on. All right. So that's what we want. And that's what the time lapse is going to be. 
So now that we have all those in a folder, what we're gonna do with them is, there's a couple ways you can put these together. One is called FFmpeg. It's a utility that you can use to create videos and, ed and edit videos, but it's command line. It's not user friendly. Um, it's a little hard to get the hang of. I used to use that, but now I started using another program, which is also free, which is amazing because it is a full on video editor, but it'll put these into time lapse very well. And it's free. It's called DaVinci Resolve. And here it is back here. Um, it's called DaVinci Resolve. It's by Blackmagic. And um, you can download it for free and use it and create professional videos. I use this for my YouTube channel and it's a little bit of a learning curve, but man, it'll do everything. And it's a great program. So anyway, enough bragging on that. So to actually make this into a time lapse, what you want to do is when you open up DaVinci Resolve, I started a new project here. This is where you end up. And there's some different modes down here at the bottom. This is edit mode. What we want to do is go over here to the media mode. So we just go to media mode and now we want to open our folder back up here and we want to grab this and just copy the whole folder into there, All right? Now that it's sitting there, we want to make sure that frame display mode is sequential or sequence. So once you have that set, now I can drag this and put it in my media pool down here. A few little steps, but now we're done now. So this is actually a time lapse now. Works well. So now I can go over here and actually drag it into a project here and it will be, and I can use it. I can add more stuff to it and all that. Let's see, let me show you. And I like to add something else to it, which is that other part I was talking about. I'm going to put the, drag this into my media pool and put this at the end here. Let me go ahead and mute this. We don't want the audio. If I run this now, it shows me picking it up. And I can actually get that to the point where right before my hands come in, I'll trim that off and now it'll be time lapse and pick it up. I hope you enjoyed that project. If you decide to make one yourself and you have any questions, just leave those questions in the comments below. And if you, want a cable for a different camera, um, just leave that in the comments below also. I can maybe work up a circuit for you. If you don't want to make the cable but you want one, you can head over to my website at dandesigns3d.com. I have some available over there. I also have the STL files for free over there and have the SolidWorks design tutorials and all that on my channel and over on my website. So you can go over and check that out. I also have lists of all the materials I used and all that. So all those links in the description. And I hope you enjoyed this and we'll see you in the next video.